so it is a layoff that dates to November of 2015 for Ronda Rousey and Ken Flo. It ends December 30th, Friday night in Las Vegas. And I wouldn't have it any other way. We'll talk about how deserving Ronda Rousey is in a little bit. But Nunez versus Rousey for the UFC Bantamweight title. This is huge. And it's a big surprise because I'm myself and I think a lot of people, just the, what was coming out of the Rousey camp, what was being said, just the schedule, the way that it looked like, it didn't seem like she was going to be back in 2016. It seemed like, you know, some uh, time in the, maybe March 2017 she was going to be back. But it's great to have her back. Obviously still one of the biggest stars, uh, if not the biggest star in the sport right now, Herman Connor at the top. Um, it, it, it's big for the sport, man. And, and the fact that she's getting this uh, in a title fight shows that she's hungry, that, you know, there's some questions of what her mental state is like coming off that loss against Holly Holm. And, uh, right, right. you know, obviously she, she wants the big game, which, which you got to love. Now, just now, because Juliana Pena is also worthy doesn't mean that Ronda Rousey isn't worthy of a title shot. And I think a lot of people have come out and said something along the lines of, you know, Juliana wouldn't have a job if it weren't for Ronda Rousey. And you can make the argument that at least under the UFC banner, maybe she wouldn't. And of course, women's MMA has absolutely exploded. Now the biggest fight we can put together in the sport is a women's fight between Ronda Rousey and Chris Cyborg. But as far as this fight is concerned, Kenny, some thought maybe a tune-up fight for Ronda Rousey. I mean, I don't really know what that is. If you're looking at a top five bantamweight, they're all tough. But I mean, dude, fight week is like 68 very short days away Yet Ronda Rousey is the betting favorite here. I mean, I would probably lean that way. I mean, if you're forced to make a prediction right now, I mean, which way are you going? I, I, that's a very good question. I don't know. Listen, if a fight goes to the mat, uh, it's going to be Ronda Rousey all day. If it stays on the feet, it's going to be Amanda Nunes. Now, the fight starts to get interesting as we move past that third round. We've seen Rousey go more than wait, right? Did she go? Did she beat Misha in the fourth or the third? I think it was I the think third. Okay, so I'm wrong about that. But That's right. uh, one thing we do know is that Amanda uh, Nunes can gas uh, late in the fight. We saw her do that, uh, you know, uh, against uh, Shlomenko. So, no, Shevchenko. Sorry, Shevchenko. Uh, so <laughs> I feel like uh, you know she needs to be careful as far as pacing against someone like Rousey. She needs to keep it on the feet. Um, so that's the way I see it. You know. For me, a lot of it is if Rousey has been training for the last couple of months. If she hasn't been training for the last couple of months, you know, in some ways I'm leaning towards Amanda Nunes because, you know, she can get it done on the feet. We know that for sure. She has big time firepower, but she's also Brazilian Jitsu black belt. She's very competent on the mat as well. Not sure if she can withstand the submission game, the submission attacks from Ronda Rousey, but she's definitely going to be competent enough uh, to know how to defend herself down there. Prevailing Prevail wisdom would be that Ronda Rousey would not make wholesale changes to her training and would probably not come in and be some world beater as far as her technique and striking is concerned. I mean, you think she gets back or at least tries to get back to what made her the most dominant champion in women's MMA history and just try to grapple and clinch and bully the other fighter. I mean, you know, all I'll say is for the sports bettors out there that are used to paying minus 1000 for Ronda Rousey, you see her at minus 250 right now. And I think for a lot of bettors against almost any woman in the world on any given Saturday night, there's value there. Uh, there, there definitely is value there. Uh, you know, pe- people kind of forget it. And it's weird because that last fight uh, against Holly Holm has really skewed uh, the perception of Ronda Rousey. Um, you know, I, uh, did she have holes in her game? Absolutely. Um, you know, but to, to say that now she sucks or she, she can't get it done, she was never any good, is it, just ridiculous. People kind of going uh, the whole other route with it. But, you know, the reality in that fight against Holly Holm, I don't think Ronda Rousey really took that seriously. I, I think that she was beaten down with her schedule of her fight schedule that year, um, you know, doing all those movies. You can't compete at an elite level against these uh, high-level women uh, and, and do all those other things. Um, also, I think she was injured. So she does have a lot of excuses heading into that fight. I think she's going to take this fight extremely serious. I think she's going to use her hands as a as a means to set up that clinch and takedown. And, and from there, there's just not a whole lot of women that can stop the takedown against Ronda Rousey. And once it hits the mat is when it's going to get interesting, especially early on. Uh, to see Amanda Nunes at full capacity in those early rounds will be interesting on the ground. Um, and I think it's probably going to be in Ronda Rousey's best bet, to, you know, best interest to take the fight a little bit later and like see how uh, Nunes can handle that pressure later. 
See, when you were in your fighting prime, I mean, you never really let the weight go. I mean, I remember you'd come to ESPN and, and you would joke about fat flow or whatever it was, you know, but you never went weeks without training in your prime. And I'm not sa- suggesting that Ronda has been, but a big question for me is what kind of shape she is in and what she has done physically over the last year. So that if she does need to get this job done in minute 17 that she has a chance to do so um in terms of the betting value kenny when as soon as the betting line was announced a lot of people were saying oh my god amanda nunez plus 240 just dusted misha tate at ufc 200 i can't believe it and there was a little bit of movement a little bit of action that came in on amanda nunez right out of the shoot um but i just i don't know man i i think it's very interesting that people to your point just sort of sleep on rousey and they judge her only on this loss and not on everything that preceded it and i just think it's going to be really interesting to see where that betting line closes i think for a lot of betters if you see ronda rousey minus 180 minus 200 i don't know i think a lot of fans i mean a lot of a lot of the experts and the hardcores think i'm crazy but dude ronda rousey minus 200 man used to pay in five six times that price yeah, absolutely. These styles make fights, and, and I like this style matchup for her against Manny Nunes. It's a completely different fight for me than it was against Holly. So as Chris Cyborg had this tweet, um, if your team spent years calling me an it with a dick looking like Vanderlei in a dress, it shouldn't be hard to make the fight at Ronda Rousey. That seems to me to be the biggest fight that can be made in the sport right now. Dana White has suggested that it has potential, it has some legs. I think he understands monetarily what it would mean. Do you think that's a fight that we're going to see? I think so. Listen, it all depends on how she does here against Nunes. I think that if she can beat Nunes, um, she gets uh, by, you know, who I think is going to be the toughest competition of her career. I think Nunes is going to be a tougher uh, fight in a lot of ways. I think I, let's say this. Nunez is a better fighter than Holly Holm. It's a different style matchup, but she's a better fighter. She's more complete. Um, she has much more uh, power than Holly Holm. So it's very interesting in that regard. If she can beat Nunez, I think it's also a very good indicator of maybe how she would do against someone like Cyborg. Because Nunez can strike. She has that same kind of power. She has that same kind of speed as Cyborg. Perhaps not, not as big, not as strong. But if she can get by Nunez, I think we will definitely see that fight against Cyborg, it's too big of a fight to not make happen. And it doesn't matter that there, whether there's a belt on the line or not. Make it at 140 pounds, have that fight happen, um, and I think we're going to have a lot of eyeballs on that fight. I remember before Ronda Rousey lost to Holly Holm, we would say, can you imagine Rousey trying to enjoy her retirement and people always asking her about the Cyborg fight? Yep. We always felt like the competitor and her really wanted that fight. And I still believe part of her really does want that fight to prove that she can do to Cyborg what nobody has done. But I think short of it being a 10 to $20 million payday, and I think it would be, I'm just not sure of the motivation for Rousey. I think if she beats Amanda Nunes, she might walk away. I think if she loses to Nunes, there's a pretty good chance she walks away. I'm just not sure because she's gone sort of radio silent what her motivation is. Does she want to make babies with Travis Brown? And I'd certainly respect her for it. Um, You know, what does she want to do? Does she want to make movies? She may just want to be a mother, you know? So I think that also is telling when it comes to Amanda Nunes because – Amanda Nunes and Cyborg, all they think about every day is mixed martial arts. And certainly Ronda right now getting ready for this fight, that's what she's thinking about. But it's just hard to know where her headspace is at, given the silence over the last year. Yeah, I mean, it is tough. But I, again, with that much money on the line and this being such a small window, listen, Ronda Rousey can retire right now. She doesn't need the money, but there is the competitor in her, the story of completing this and coming back beating Nunez, who's the best woman in the sport right now, uh, besides Cyborg, and coming back and fighting Cyborg and having the potential to beat her but would be huge, and that would be the end of the Ronda Rousey story and, and really would complete it. Could you imagine beating Nunez, beat Rousey, and then walk off into the sunset? Well, at least she is back, and that'll be a hot ticket Friday, December 30th. Interesting Friday night pay-per-view UFC at 207. 